A new retrospective study suggests there is no link between this grain-free dog food and DCM. Now what do you feed your dog? Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe. Hit the bell to sign up for notifications. I'm having a brand new webinar called DCM and Dog Food. You know, what you really need to know, should you be feeding grain-free dog food? Should you not? Do you even need to be concerned at all? Click the link in the box below to sign up. Do you need to be worrying about grain-free dog food? Like, should it be grain? Should it contain peas, lentils or not? And is there really a link between a type of heart disease, DCM, dilated cardiomyopathy, and grain-free dog food? The FDA, they first published reports in 2019 about this apparent link between grain-free dog food and a type of heart disease called DCM. When it first came out, it was like this huge thing. I mean, it was like all over the news. I've done multiple videos on it. And it really had me even questioning, like, should, what is really best to be feeding my dog? What do I suggest you feed your dog? Now, this new study really sheds big questions on that initial, like, concern. It came out of the University of Missouri. They did a retrospective study over the last 20 years. And this was a really, really large study. It included nearly 70,000 dogs. So these were dogs that referred to a veterinary cardiologist specifically for a workup of heart disease. And then the instance of dogs being diagnosed with DCM, dilated cardiomyopathy. And they wanted to see if there's a correlation with the rise in grain-free pet food sales and the incidence of dogs diagnosed with DCM. Dilated cardiomyopathy is the second most commonly acquired type of canine cardiac disease. And it's really important. It's a really difficult disease to treat. And often for many of the dogs that I saw in practice, there wasn't a whole lot we could do. We could symptomatically treat them. And if they didn't respond to any form of supplements, i.e. taurine, I mean, they had a really, really short lifespan. They report that the average incidence of DCM at these veterinary referral centers was 3.9%. But at that same time, you almost had like a thousand percent increase in grain-free pet food sales. Guess what? There's not a correlation. Big, big key takeaway is over that period of time, like 2011, 2019, they did not see any significant change in the percent of dogs being diagnosed with DCM, really. Secondarily, they said there was no correlation between the incidence of DCM and grain-free pet food sales. I've been concerned about this. I've really modified little Tula's diet. You know, her last food was a can of it. It's a great quality food just so happens to include grain. I'm like, okay, I gotta get way of the legumes, no peas, no lentils. You're gonna eat some of this if you're gonna eat kibble. Maybe I didn't need to get her off of instinct. So in other words, when you look at thousands of animals and you compare that to grain-free pet food sales, they're not seeing any type of statistical increase in the number of diagnoses of DCM. Do some dogs get DCM and is it related to diet? Yes. Are we seeing some dogs improve in terms of being diagnosed with DCM and then have their diets changed? Yes, we are, specifically when some of these dogs are being supplemented with taurine. But does that mean when we look at the whole canine population, there's a giant risk? It appears to be not. If you have a dog who is doing really well on a grain-free pet food, you know what? I'd be inclined for you to just leave your dog on it. If your dog happens to be one of the breeds that seems to have some type of correlation between diet and DCM, i.e. the golden retrievers, okay, maybe then think twice. Secondarily, consider an additional supplement such as taurine. Does that mean, like, is this a sure thing? Is this like, okay, it's just been made up? Uh, it sure makes me question and wonder uh, how, how is that the FDA can take a small number of reports, you know, 550 dogs being diagnosed with it, and then blow this out of epic proportion, but it happens. And obviously there's some form of link, but in my opinion, and especially based on this report, I don't think it's near to the extent uh, that the media, that the FDA has made it appear to be. You guys, thanks again for watching this video. I've hoping I've given you a little bit more clarity or not. But at the very least, I encourage you to sign up for my brand new and updated revised webinar, DCM and dog food, what to feed, what to not. 
You can click that link in the box below to sign up.